Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike. You guys are rocking with me in Mike's Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we are diving back into Vsauce. This is how old can we get? You know what I'm saying? How old can we really get? And how, how old is probably the oldest person? And without further ado, just like always, we're just going to dive right into it. So let's roll. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here, and today we are going to talk about time, specifically how much time we have. What's the oldest a person can ever be? Well, the world record for the world's longest living person belongs to Jeanne Calma, a French woman who lived to be 122. Yeah, I know back in the day, like in between, I think, what was it, like the 1400s and 1800s, there's a whole bunch of like old people from like Europe and stuff that would come out and say that they were like 150 or close to 200 years old and they would try to make up lies to be like, you know, I was once at the Battle of Hastings or something like that. You know, it's just something crazy. I think it was just for attention or for recognition, you know, stuff and to put themselves in the history books. But, you know, after a while, everybody just started, I'm pretty sure, stopped listening. And that's why you would barely ever hear about these people or say in the history books. But, yeah, just a little, I guess, a little tidbit. But let's keep going. Right now, at this very moment, there are only 37 people alive who were born in the 1800s. Those 37 people have lived in three different centuries. But as medical knowledge expands and our understanding of biology improves, people are living longer and longer. Yeah, because this is what, like, 10, this video is like 10 years old, so th of those 37 people, you can go ahead and cut like 10 of them, probably 20 of them out already, because. You know what I'm saying? Adding an extra 10 years to an already person's life that's already, you know, 100 years old is kind of asking a lot, you feel me? So, let's keep it. Longer and longer. In fact, scientists believe that based on statistics, the first person who will ever live to be 150 has already been born. It could be one of you, but according to the math, it's probably someone who was born last year. Here's the thing. As humans get older, the likelihood of them dying increases, but there are some types of animals that have what is called negligible senescence, also known as biological immortality. And these. Yeah, I see, and I, I feel like with us being so smart, one of these days, somebody's going to be able to extract um, what makes a tortoise or. You know, some of these super old sharks and stuff like that be able to live to like 150, 200 years, 300 years old and stuff like that and see if we can be able to apply it to ourselves. I know it's kind of crazy to think about, but I mean, it'd be pretty cool to see what each person could accomplish with 300 years of life. You know what I'm saying? Just, it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not mortality. It's just giving ourselves a little bit extra time to get stuff done. In a sense, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we can help our, our technology go a little bit further by doing that. Maybe immortality and these types of animals have never been observed to actually age animals like the hydra can only die because of accidents disease or predators the world's oldest living individual tree has clocked in at more than 4,600 years old. It's called the Methuselah tree, and it exists somewhere in this forest. Government officials won't actually release its exact location to protect it from vandalism, but it's out there. The lifespan of- Yeah, watch there be something even older than, uh, you know, saying even this tree. Cause I feel like if we go into like the Congo or the Amazon, you know what I'm saying? There's always there's always new stuff being discovered there all the time. So what's to say? You know what I'm saying? A new, a new old this huge super old tree, and until you really cut it down until the base, you don't really even know how old it is. You gotta be able to count the lanes and stuff like that. Unless they have a new way of doing it, but I have no idea. But that's the only way I'm thinking of an organism can be even longer than that if you include clonal colonies. For instance, these quaking pines all look like individual trees, but they're actually all clones of one genetic code. They all share a root system, and the root system continues to make more trees, meaning that these trees are all part of the same organism, and experts have calculated based on the root system that this one male quaking pine has been- It almost been sounds like a, kind of like how fungus is. like. How it spread out like that because obviously that whole yellow spread right there was the tree that's crazy system that this one male quaking pine has been around for at least eighty thousand years but let's get back to humans and rather than talking about how time is let's talk about how time feels 
intense moments of your life are remembered as lasting much longer than times that were relatively dull. Psychologists say that the reason for this is that our brains take deeper and richer memories of events that are novel. Or See, my thing is too, that's weird, because I can, I feel like I can probably remember things like crazy that are you know, same for my childhood and stuff like that, but say stuff from like my different deployments and stuff, I can, like, I can't, I'm probably not going to be able to remember, uh, at least from my first one. Uh, and yeah, I don't know, it's just kind of crazy to think about, like, and obviously the deployments happen a lot sooner, but it's just, I'm not going to be able to remember some of those things. For events that are intense than ones that aren't. When your experiences are intense and novel, you're not remembering more things about it, but you are making more copies. Rather than just making normal memories, during stress, the amygdala gets involved and also remembers things. And many people believe that is why intense moments are remembered as lasting longer. This phenomenon becomes quite mind-blowing on a macro scale. Think of it this way. When you are a one-year-old baby, one year represents 100% of your life. But when you turn... I've heard of this because this is like by the time you turn 80, it's already you've already lived like you know one eightieth of your life, or you know what I'm saying, or one. You know, so it's it's already like it's like that big of a sliver. You know what I'm saying? It's like a point, or it's, it's it doesn't feel the same. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it feels like a little kick in the grand scheme of things. Old baby, one year represents one hundred percent of your life. But when you turn two years old, that second year was only half your life. And the next year you live through is only a third of your life. And by the time you turn 80, one year only represents an 80th of your life. Those percentages are important because they may explain why your childhood feels like it took so long. But as you get older, the years seem to fly by. You have more novel experiences when you're young. And it's crazy too, because you're still having novel memories as you get older. It's just those novel memories are now kind of in reverse. And so as experiencing stuff for the first time, you're most likely to start, start experiencing stuff for the last time. And it's just that I feel like your brain doesn't really understand or, you know, notices when that happens, obviously. Like, <clears throat> if you're talking to somebody and, you know, you guys say, you know, peace out to each other and in the back of your mind, you're probably going to think to yourself, hey, I'll see you this person for like a month. In reality, things happen, life changes and stuff like that. And... Now, that, that last time that you said bye to him is the last time you're ever going to speak to him, so, or, you know, just stuff like that, so it's just kind of crazy to think about, but, yeah, uh, I just, you know, brain just doesn't think of it that way, though. You first learn a language, you first see your mother, you first learn to walk, you have your first kiss. These are all deeply and richly remembered by your brain, and so later on, it feels as if they took longer to happen. Now here's what's really mind-blowing. Let's look at a graphical representation of the percentage of your life that each successive year is. The first year is 100%. The second year is only half. The third year is a third, and so on will go all the way out to 80. Now using this representation, under this model, when you turn 80 years old and look back at your life, the point that feels like the middle isn't your 40s, it's your early 20s. The good... Well, it's kind of funny though, too, because I'm like, with 28? And I feel like my my middle of my lifespan was like what? Well, I'm about to be 29. But my, the middle of my lifespan feels like it's probably like what, like 20? But in reality, it was, you know, 14 to 15. So, but that doesn't feel like it. That feels like, you know, I was still a little baby at that point. So it's just kind of weird. The good news here is that the more novel things you do and things you see and places you visit and people you meet, the slower time feels and the more rich it feels. So go out there and do something cool. Do something weird. Do something new. Subscribe to Vsauce if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching. Alright guys, we'll go ahead and end it right there. So yeah, definitely kind of crazy to think about um, getting older and all that stuff like that. And how, you know, your mind kind of takes in getting older and takes in different things like that. And as you get older, you probably won't be remembering as much stuff as when you were younger, unless your brain just, you know, kind of kicks some things out and brings some things in, maybe, who knows. But again, guys, thank you guys again for joining me on another episode of Mike's Intellectual Corner. If you guys liked the episode, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys when I see you. I'm out. Peace.